This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to our worship at First Presbyterian Church in Granbury, Texas, as we gather this morning. And we are glad that you're here with us, particularly those of you that uh, are in different locales who are watching us online. We hope that this worship experience will be meaningful to you and bring you into the presence of God. Call your attention to a couple of announcements this morning. Articles for the February edition of the Bridge Newsletter are due in the office by 6 o'clock Monday evening. Please do send those to Stephanie at office at fpcgranberry.com. The usual email just going to a different person right now. Hope that you'll do that, particularly those of you that are on session that uh, owe articles to the newsletter. Please do get that done Monday evening so we can get that together. Remind you also that uh, each one of you is invited on your birthday or on someone whom you love's birthday to make a birthday offering to our permanent endowment funds by giving one dollar for each year of the birthday. We hope that you'll do this. You may designate which one of the funds that goes to. If not, if you do not designate, it goes simply to the general endowment fund and then will be split amongst the other funds uh, when we make changes there. So hope that you will uh, remember to give to the birthday offering and uh, help us to do the ongoing ministry of the church as we share those, those monies together. And happy birthday if you happen to have one of those coming up. We hope that uh, you have a good one. Connie Darnay had uh, her other knee done this past week and uh, is recuperating. Hope that you'll keep Connie and Earl in your prayers uh, as, uh, as she goes through physical therapy and moves beyond surgery. For others that need prayer, please do take a look at the, uh, the bulletin, which is uh, connected to this link, attached to this, uh, to this link. You can see the bulletin and see others in our midst that need your prayers and your concern. I encourage you throughout the week to keep them in prayer. Our worship begins... With the prelude, I invite you in silence to prepare your hearts and minds to enter into the presence of God.
Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Come and see the grace of God. Christ, our teacher and our friend. Come and see the Son of God. Christ, our healer and salvation. God is moving in this place. Come and see. Come and see. Come, let those with eyes and ears worship God. Now let us remain standing and sing here in this place. The God who is here in this place is the God of forgiveness and the God of grace. Let us together confess our sin to God that we may know God's forgiveness and may dwell in Christ's grace. Let us pray together. God of abundant mercy, you embodied love for us in the life of Jesus Christ. You ate with sinners and shared with outcasts. You loved with boldness and healed with grace. Forgive us, O oh God, when we do not trust your love, when we doubt whether we are worthy of your care. Forgive us, O oh God, when we try to cheapen love, when we limit it to shallow feelings instead of bold actions. Help us, O oh God, when we cannot feel your love, when we are isolated, afraid, and unable to see your presence. Forgive us, O oh God, for the ways we fall short. Free us to try again, and let your love lead the way. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. If a person is in Christ, they become a new creation altogether. Behold, the past is finished and it is gone. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In the waters of our baptism and in the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Come and see the peace of Christ is in this place. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you today longing to hear from you. Silence any voices in us that will prevent us from hearing what you have to say to us. We are here, Lord. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our first reading is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had yet not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. 
And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children, gather around your screen. Miss Nancy, Nancy has a word for you. Well, Goldilocks jumped up. She saw the baby bear and the mama bear and the daddy bear looking at her, and she was so scared. She jumped up and screamed. Ah! She jumped out of the bed. She ran home, and she never came back again. The end. Then who lived happily? Who lives happily? Uh-huh. Uh, well, I guess the bears lived happily ever after because that girl never came back to their house. Good thing, yeah. And I guess that Goldilocks lived happily because she had learned to listen to her conscience. What is that? Well, your conscience is that tiny little voice inside of you that tells you that you shouldn't eat the cookies even after your mama told you to and you ate them anyway? Oh yeah, yeah. And your conscience is that still small voice inside of you that tells you you should turn off your tablet because your mama told you to and not watch it under the covers instead, like a sneaky. Oh yeah, yeah. Your conscience is that voice on the inside of you that tells you not to cheat on your taxes and not to go faster on the highway than you should. It's that little voice inside of you that tells you not to gossip about people and not not to say things that hurt people's feelings. Um, it's that little voice inside of you that helps you to know that you're not always right, that sometimes other people are right. You have to listen to that little voice. You know what that voice really is? Let me guess what. It's the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Today, we're going to hear a story about a man whose name was Samuel, a boy, a boy, a boy. And Samuel was laying in his bed and he heard somebody, someone call him, Samuel, 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 Samuel. And he went into his father and he said, here I am. And his father said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. So he lay back down and he heard a voice say, Samuel, 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 Samuel. And he went to his father and he said, here I am. And his father said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Go back to bed. Samuel went back to bed and he heard the voice one more time. This time when he went into his father and he said, father, I heard the voice again say, Samuel. His father said, I believe it is the voice of God speaking to you and you should listen. So Samuel went back to his bed and he listened for the voice of God. God speaks to us all. He does, yes. God speaks to us all, all the time. The problem is we don't always listen. Sometimes the voice of God sounds like your mama or your daddy saying, don't do that, don't go there, don't say those words. Sometimes we hear the voice of God from our pastor on Sunday mornings when we tune in to hear him. Sometimes we hear the voice of God when we read the Bible or even when we read other great pieces of literature. Sometimes we hear the voices of the voice of God in our friends and sometimes we just hear the voice of God in our heart calling us, wake up, wake up. Does God call you? He does, of course he does. I think God ca probably called that bad Goldilocks and told her, you know better than that. Don't go in those bears houses. Don't go where you don't belong. Listen to your mama and your papa. That's the voice of God. We hear it all the time. We can hear it in the wind. We can hear it in the rain. The voice of God speaks to us every day. In these hard times, when people are having to stay home because of the COVID and we can't be together because of church and the news seems scary. In these hard times, it's more important than ever to listen to the voice of God. Here's what I think the voice of God says to you. He says, Waco, 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 I love you. He does, yes. Waco, you are my beloved child and I would never steer you wrong. Listen for the voice of God. 
and you'll know what's right to do. Let's pray. Okay, okay. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for calling me, for calling me. Help me to understand. Help me to understand when you speak to me, when you speak to me. Help me to know, help me to know that you can talk through my mama and my papa, my mama and my papa, my pastor and my Bible, my pastor and my Bible, and in the still small places in my heart. In the still small places of my heart. Amen. Amen. The gospel lesson today is from the gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, the 43rd through the 51st verses. Listen carefully to this passage of Jesus beginning to know and to call that others might follow and do the work of the ministry with which he is charged. Listen carefully to this passage of scripture for God's word to you. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. And he found Philip, and he said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. And when Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. From the Son of Man. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord shall endure forever and ever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A couple of marvelous stories filled with wonderful words. That's what this morning's passages offer to us. A feast for those of us that preach. And the way the tales are cobbled together intrigues me. I love words and I so admire and envy those who can take those words and put them together in a way that draws in the listeners and invites them to participate in the story. It's a gift, a poetic gift, to place the words, their sounds, and their meanings in formation so that their truth may ring in our ears, yea, even make our ears tingle, according to our passage from Samuel this morning. To spin a yarn that honors the nuance of life and delivers a message of meaning that's the point of storytelling. It's a gift. And it's a gift that's obvious and evident this morning in our scriptures from John and from Samuel. Words. Words are important, you know. To use them, to hear them, to understand them, to listen to them, to heed them. They convey meanings and truths and lead others to invitations of faith. So many phrases in these two passages that do just that. Words can be scarce. 
In Samuel, the setting of Samuel's call is such a time. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. And visions were not widespread. We know God by sights and by sounds, by activity about us. When we don't hear and see the presence of God, we wonder often if we are alone. Samuel didn't expect to hear the call of God. How often do we make the mistake of assuming that the sound of God's voice is simply the person in the next room? How often do we miss God's presence because we can't imagine that God would use another to speak to us? How often do we hear another and not know that what we've just heard was actually the voice of God? But in the same telling, in the same conversation about God, God says, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears tingle. I'm about to do something that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. Words. Words so powerful that they cause our ears to tingle. I love the idea. When was the last time our ears tingled at the sound of God in our midst? I think right about now would be a good time for all of us to hear a little tingling and to feel a little tingling in our ears. Names are words. In the Hebrew scriptures, so often the meaning of a passage is contained in the names of the players in that tale. Names play a big role, particularly in this tale from Samuel. Samuel is this miracle child, as are so many of those that are born and called to God's work in the scriptures, a miracle that he even exists the product of an extraordinary pregnancy. And he's named appropriately. Samuel literally means name of God or God has heard. God has heard. This young one who will be a kingmaker and a trustworthy prophet of God must first learn to listen for God and to know that often God speaks when we least expect it. A prophet is one who listens before one speaks. And Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim and could no longer see, this blind one, Eli, is the one who sees the situation for what it is and sees what it is God is calling the boy Samuel to do. And Eli means literally my God. So each time that Samuel, God has heard, runs to Eli, my God, thinking Eli has called him, he misses the calling of the true God. But it's Eli who sees the situation for what it is and puts Samuel in the conversation with the God who calls. It's a good bit of Jewish comedy that plays on the names of the players and the senses of those involved. God has heard, my God, and now Samuel has heard. And as Samuel begins to respond to God's call, God is present and Samuel grows in his faith and in his response, this boy prophet. And the scripture tells us that the Lord was with him and none of his words fell to the ground. The words in this tale are so important that God remains near to ensure that those words are heard, that they are not wasted upon the ground, that they are not lost. It is faithful words that make Samuel a trustworthy prophet. Faithful words, words faithfully heard and faithfully shared, words held tightly 
to make sure that they didn't fall to the ground before they were heard. Words meant to be so moving that they make one's ears tingle. When did our ears last tingle with the truth of God with us? The words we use matter. It's why we're wise to choose our words carefully. The communicative power of words can lead to confusion if used carelessly, but to great understanding if they're used carefully. That's true whether we're having a conversation with our good friend, with our spouse, or with the nations of the earth. The words we use matter. Samuel hears words, but he assumes that they are from Eli. And when Eli figures it out, he instructs Samuel how to reply. And when Samuel hears his name called one more time, he uses the words that Eli gave him to utter. Speak, for your servant is listening. Speak, for your servant is listening. God then promises that he's about to do something that will make ears tingle. Words spoken, words heard. How important it is to listen carefully to God's word. And then Samuel is charged with speaking a little truth to power. Eli knows that he's heard from God. Eli knows that Samuel doesn't want to say what it is he's heard. And yet he tells Samuel, speak those words to me that I may hear them. Eli's sons have used their position to profit themselves, consuming the fat of the sacrifices and taking advantage of vulnerable people, particularly vulnerable women. God will not be gentle with Eli and with his family. And at Eli's insistence, Samuel shares with Eli everything that God has said. Eli hears his words, even though they are hard to hear. It's often hard to speak honestly. And it's often hard to hear honestly. The honesty of Samuel's words place him in favor across all of Israel because he spoke the truth. The honesty of Samuel's words calls Eli to accept accountability for his sons and for their behavior. Words in this instance change the situation. The words that we speak matter if we wish others to know us as we are. The words we use are often our invitation to others to follow God, to engage in this venture of faith with us. Jesus says simply, follow me. And Philip falls in line behind him. And when Philip happens upon Nathanael and asks him to do the same, he quotes words of scripture. He talks about what he's known from scriptures. We found him about whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, of Nazareth. And Nathaniel responds with the words that perhaps many were thinking, but words that most likely should have gone unsaid. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Hard words that may sound a bit familiar to us even today. Our words reveal the assumptions that we make of others and where they're from. They often reveal honestly what we hold in our hearts, 
even when we hope to keep those thoughts hidden. Nazareth was a small town, maybe two, three hundred folks. It was poor and hardly even merited a spot on the map. It was dependent on the nearby town of Sepphoris for its economic livelihood. And those that knew Nazareth in words that we would use today, not advisedly, were thugs and trailer trash. That's all that Nathaniel thought came from Nazareth. Our words often shed light on what we ourselves don't know and don't understand. But Philip is not faced. He simply says to Nathaniel, Come and see. Come and see. And Jesus sees Nathaniel coming. And he pronounces, Truly here is an Israelite in whom there is no Deceit. He has spoken honestly. Nathaniel is astonished that Jesus knows him, even more astonished that he knows him well enough to have an opinion about him. He knew his name and he knew what made him him. Nathaniel didn't even recall their meeting. Jesus names the time and the place under the fig tree even before Philip called you. Nathaniel is moved to belief. Why? Because Jesus knows him. Because Jesus cares who he is. Because Jesus names the honesty that is in Nathaniel's heart. This is not just someone from Nazareth. This is someone who knows us before we know ourselves. This is one who calls us by name. This is one who teaches with his words. This is one to follow. Nathaniel discovered this Jesus without the benefit of hearing all the words that John's gospel uses about Jesus. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word was with God. And nothing, nothing came into being without him. Those are words Nathaniel doesn't know. But that word was Jesus. Nathaniel discovered what it meant to be known by the divine, as each one of us are. That's the experience that we're called to. That's the sound of a voice that wakens us in the night. It's that voice that calls us to be honest in telling the story that God reveals to us. And let's be honest, often we are so slow to listen. But maybe the third time is a charm as it was for Samuel. And sometimes the words call us to follow and we question the invitation and we doubt the one who calls us is really from God, like Nathaniel did. But the experience of being known by this Jesus causes both ears to tingle in the presence of the one who is the word. Listen for the words the words calling us to fully live in this world entrusted to our care. God calling us to awaken and to be involved in the affairs of God's world. They are words calling us to conversation with God. They are words calling us to honesty and to faithful integrity. May our ears tingle with the sound of that call. And may we respond faithfully to that conversation with God. 
Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith in words from the Confession of 1967. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Calling Lord, we know that you are almighty, that you are perfect, that you are wonderful, that you are one true God. 
the only one. Yet we hear so many voices, so much noise. Much of the noise stirs up in us feelings of anxiety and fear and despair, maybe even hatred and anger. We ask that you silence the noise, Lord. Give us wisdom to discern your voice above all others, that we might hear you calling our names. Give us faith and confidence to answer you, saying, Here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We know that you are both a powerful speaking creator and also a loving listening father. Hear now the prayers of your people. Ever-present Lord, in this time of social isolation and unrest in our world, we confess that we sometimes feel alone and at risk. In the midst of our loneliness, remind us that you are always with us. Your word assures us. You have searched each of us and known us. You are acquainted with all of our ways. You know our thoughts. You hem us in behind and before. You have knitted us together in our mother's wombs, already knowing our names, already having written in your book all the days of our lives. You have said we are wonderfully made, that we are made in your image, and that you will never leave us or forsake us. Be with those who cannot believe or maybe have never heard these truths. We praise you for your presence with all of your human creation. Turn hearts and minds to you, Lord, that all may be saved and receive your peace and your calling. God of all peace, we feel like we are living in such a time of chaos, and we are comforted in knowing that none of this surprises you. Your plan is in place, and you work all things, all things for good. We pray that you will be with the leaders of our world, that all might submit to the authority of your perfect will, whatever their intent, and be with us, mold us, reshape us, fashion us into a people who eagerly work to share the gospel with all we meet in words and in actions. You are the answer to the distress in our world. You are with us. Give us hearts to see and voices to proclaim your goodness. Great physician, we pray that you will eradicate COVID from the face of the earth, and we know that you can do that in the twinkling of an eye, if it be your will. We are told that we have not because we ask not. Lord, we are asking for a miracle. Free your planet from the destruction of this virus, O Lord. We pray for healing for all who are in need. Specifically today, we pray for those in our midst who are struggling for health. We pray for Ed. Mary, J.D., and Lorraine, for Wynette, Eloise, Mark, and Jimmy, for Dave, D., Donna, and Martha, for Stan, Diane, Connie, C.H., and little C.J. Be with them in their time of need and bless them with your healing and your comfort. Redeeming Lord, we praise you for the gift of eternal salvation and for the gift of our sanctification. Work in our lives that we may be transformed more and more into the image of Christ who taught us and his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What great love God has for us that God calls us by name. Let us now give ourselves back to God and a portion of the blessings God has given us.
Lord, we are amazed when we realize that you know every person, that you know every person by name, that you even know the numbers of the hairs on our heads every minute. Lord, what great love you have for us. May you take the gifts that we have given you, the gifts of ourselves, the gifts of our blessings, the gifts of our talents, and use them to bring more of your people to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. As we go from this place today, as you go from your places at home and watching this service of worship, think about these two stories, that we might learn to listen and to hear God's call as did Samuel, and that we might hear clearly the Christ and his disciples calling us to follow and come and to see that in the midst of those words, we might hear the word of God, we might speak honestly God's word, that God's presence may be known in this world. Surely that is what we are called to do. And now with the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.